Well, hello, all you heli huddlers out there. Happy Earth Day. And welcome back to another episode of CMH's Virtual Heli Huddles. Today, we have gathered some of CMH's finest to answer any questions you have for our panel of guides. I want to start off the show today by acknowledging that we at CMH are privileged to operate in the traditional territories of the Tanaha, Sequemic, Silex, and Stony Nakoda nations. So, as they say in Tanaha, Kisu Kiyukiit, which means welcome. Now, I'd also like to recognize some more shout outs from our viewers across the virtual world. Let's scroll through the chat here and see where everyone is. Uh, Shannon in snowy Calgary. Hello. Good morning. We've got Brian from New York City. Hi, Brian. Uh, Bob and Nadine from Oakville, Ontario. You're vaccinated and ready to go hiking. That's exciting news. See uh, Dennis from Switzerland. Hi, Dennis. Got Greg from Sarajevo. Welcome. Graham in Banff, how's it going? And we've got uh, Juan from Onda, Haya from Los Angeles, how's it going in LA? Helen from Surrey, looks like it's sunny down there. And uh, who else do we have here? Kenneth, summer has arrived in Scotland, that's great news, Kenneth. Uh, Richard from Hampshire, nice to see you. And uh, Nicholas from Montreal, Jeff from Annapolis, Maryland, hello. Daisy from Duluth. Awesome. Lots of people on today. It's so great to see you all. Uh, now, I'd like to take a moment and introduce my co-host, Allie. Allie is our employee experience manager and is the perfect person to recruit and hire our newest team members. Allie has been with us for seven years now, and fun fact, she can play six songs on the guitar. I sure can. Well, thanks for that intro. Now, it's my pleasure one last time to introduce our host with the most, Brody. He's the assistant area manager at our Bugaboo Lodge and has been with CMH for nine years. Fun fact about Brody, he loves gardening. And just like previous episodes, we will be asking you a skill testing question based on information in today's huddle. So from our good friends at Arcteryx, we will be giving away this Cerium jacket. It's the perfect down jacket because it's warm, lightweight, and versatile. This is the ladies' version I'm holding up, and I'll show you the men's version later on. So keep your eyes and ears peeled because one of you will be the winner. Now, today will be a bit of a different huddle because we're going to hand the reins over to you, the audience, to steer the conversation with our amazing panel of guides. So to get us started, let's bring each of them on one by one. First up, we have Craig McGee, 24-year guide and area manager at our Adamant's operation. Next up, Steve Chambers, 25-year guide and area manager at our Revelstoke operation. Next up, Mike Welsh, 30-year guide and area manager at our Galena operation. Next up, Lily Lambert, 20-year guide and assistant area manager at our Revelstoke operation. They just keep coming. Next up, Rob Roan, 36-year guide and our director of mountain operations. And last but certainly not least, we have Brody, who we all know and love. Give another wave, Brody. <laughs> well, would you look at that for our very last huddle? We're doing a throwback to our very first huddle, and we are all wearing our finest plaid, looking sharp everyone. Awesome. Well, let me explain a little bit more about the format for today and how it's going to work. So we're going to break it down into four parts where we're going to take uh, questions from the live chat. And we've also got some video messages from some of our guests that got sent in. So we'll play those as well. And uh, we'll intermix some commercial breaks from our sponsors, which is us in order to give you some uh, some reprieve from us and get some stoke going for summer and winter. So uh, the other part here, along with Alex and Phil from Guest Services, uh, they'll be answering questions in the live chat. We also have one of our guides, Matt Peter, who's uh, the assistant area manager at Kootenai, and also uh, Jesse Sagan, who is our uh, area manager at the Nomads. They'll be answering questions in the live chat as well. So lots of opportunities to get things uh, answered here. Well, I won't waste any time. Let's start our first segment of questions here. So don't hesitate to throw questions up into the uh, the chat. And uh, let me just scroll through and see if I can find one. Here we go. This one, Allie. 
All right. Do you stay in Alberta on your summer hikes? Great question. All right. Well, I'll uh, happily take that one to start. Uh, Francis, we actually uh, do all of our hikes just in the interior of British Columbia in the Columbia Mountain Ranges. So we're very, very close to the Rockies in Alberta, but we're actually in British Columbia. Okay, next question. Let me see if I can find one here. Uh, let's see. There's so many coming in here, you guys. This is great. All right, I'm gonna put this one up for you, Allie. There's a saying, there are old avalanche experts, there are bold avalanche experts, but there are no old bold avalanche experts. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so please exposit, relate to your experiences and philosophies. Paul, bringing in the big guns right away. Okay, Paul, I'm going to throw this question to uh, Mike to get us started. Uh, hi, Paul. Uh, great question. And you're absolutely right. Um, the avalanche doesn't know that you're an expert. And I think we need to realize that. And we have to do everything we can to uh, not try and outsmart Mother Nature. Uh, we have to uh, listen to the signs that are around us and what we're hearing from other operators in the industry. We do that through a variety of means. And as a personal philosophy, I think I go out there every day and I realize that, you know, my goal is to bring my whole group home safely every day. And that, that is the ultimate goal. And it's one that uh, I don't vary from. And if I have to avoid skiing something, that's okay. I can live with that and so can my group. And we'll get it another day when the stability warrants it. So yeah, very real concern and one we take very seriously. Great question. Awesome, thanks Mike. And thanks for the question, Paul. And I hope to be one of those old guides in the future. All right, here comes the next one. Okay, what do you prefer, gloves or mittens? A great question from Bailey. All right, I'm going to roll through the whole gamut here. Let's start with Craig. I'm going to say uh, gloves for skiing, mittens for snowboarding. Okay, and Steve, for you? I would go with gloves. It's a rare day that it's cold enough in Revelstook. I need mitts, but on occasion, the mitts will come out for sure. All right. And uh, Lily? Uh, well, I like the gloves, but not any gloves. I like the lobster gloves. So it's a good dexterity, and I never get cold. Awesome. And Rob, for yourself? Don't even own mittens, so it's going to have to be gloves. <laughs> okay. And last but not least, Mike? Uh, I'm going to go gloves. Luckily, I have warm hands. Unfortunately, my toes are frozen all year long, so... <laughs> It's a curse, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go gloves. Okay, thank you. So at this point, we're gonna put up one of our video questions. It comes from Katrina. Why don't you take it away, Katrina? Hi, I'm Katrina Wolverton. My husband and I love CMH. We have 16 days of summer adventures and he has done countless heli ski trips with you guys. So my question to the guides is, for someone who's been to all the summer lodges, and some repeats, which lodge do you suggest we should go to next? All right, thanks Katrina for the question. Uh, why don't I throw that one over to uh, Steve Chambers? Yeah, great question Katrina. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of a unique trip that we do in the summertime that's pretty cool is the opportunity to go from lodge to lodge. So the Bobby Burns, so the Bugaboo's trip is a really amazing experience because you get to have um, both lodge experiences and then the hiking between the two areas is exceptional, uh, both together. Awesome, thank you. And uh, does anyone else, let's see, uh, Craig, why don't we ask you, where would you recommend Katrina go next? Well, I would say, I'd agree with Mike, I'm oh, sorry, I'd agree with Steve, but um, you know, this year it's actually closed just to you know, capacity and, and COVID, but uh, when we op open up the caribous again, that's a pretty exceptional trip. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks again, Katrina. It was a great question. And uh, we're going to take our first commercial break.
All right. Awesome. That water balloon fight seems to get me every time. Uh, let's go back to the live chat here and see if I can find some more questions here. There are lots coming in, so bear with me here. Uh, here's one. Allie. Okay. When and what avalanche training must I get to prepare uh, for coming to CMH this December? I am going to hand this one over to Lily. Well, it's uh, really good to do some training. And if you have time, uh, EST1, it's, it's really good because you get to do a lot of transceiver search, how to use your tools properly. Okay, great. Thanks, Lily. And uh, here's a specific one. Oh, question for Steve Chambers. I understand that you guide on a Telemark setup. How many Telemark skiers go to CMH each season? And why do you choose to guide on Tele gear? Are there other guides who guide on Tele skis? Uh, that is a really good question. Ski bummer dude. That is a great handle, by the way. Um, yeah, we're not a dying breed, first of all. Uh, there are two of us on this chat. Lily and myself both guide on Telemark gear. Uh, out of 140 guides, it's a pretty small number of us. I, I really like using that gear because I find I can move really easily through the terrain. Um, half the time I'll telemark turn, half the time I'll use alpine turns. But in the transitions where we go from the ski terrain into the flats, like walking the trail to the helicopter and to the pickups, it's really, really slick. Uh, when I'm the snow safety guide, I can move around really easily. I mean, I love it. It's a really versatile piece of equipment. And with the NTN binding and boot system, it's very interchangeable with all of the gear that I use from my snowboard to my Alpine gear with the same pair of boots. So um, I'm a big fan. I like it. Um, I'm lucky enough to work with Lily, who's, you know, former national Canadian Telmark racing champion. So a couple of us are keeping the, keeping the sport alive at CMH. A great question. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. I'm going to pop up the next one here. Okay, what is the single most exciting heli skiing experience that you would love to relive? Great question. Awesome. I'm going to throw this one over to Mike. Ah, uh, Helene, we've had a lot of uh, great experiences out here, but probably the highlight for me was taking my three year old daughter and carrying her down one of our runs. And uh, she was very excited. She wanted to go faster so we could get more face shots. Uh, she was a little worried about the bears because we were in the forest, but I explained they were sleeping and uh, we managed to find the pickup. So she was happy we weren't lost. So yeah, that'd be mine. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, the next one here. What has this winter been like for you without CMH operating? Great question, Patty. Let's throw this one over to Craig to start. Ooh. What's it been like? It's been very different. Um, yeah, I mean, usually our lodges of, you know, they're full as a hustle and a bustle and everybody's excited. And now there's usually, you know, three of us doing some maintenance preparing for next year. So it's a totally different vibe. Um, I've been lucky at the Adamants, we've been doing some guide development courses. So helping to continue to train our guides, but, uh, yeah, it's different. And we're really looking forward to getting back in the mountains with everybody. Awesome. Thank you very much, Craig. Well, I'm going to uh, take a moment here to go to our next video question. And this one comes from Kenneth. Kenneth, take it away. Hi, I'm a 30 year plus telemarker. I've been switching from Alpine some time ago. I uh, did a lot of ski touring, ski at the Bugaboos with Jeff McPherson, do a lot of off ski skiing, always on telemark. Um, it'd be great to have some of the CMH guides on telemarks. Is that going to be possible at all in uh, future seasons? Thank you. Bye. And we do have Kenneth tuning in today. So uh, Kenneth, thanks for the question. This one's very similar to the one we just asked Steve. So why don't we hand it over to Lily to answer that about telemarking guides. <laughs> yes, uh, Kenneth, I would be super keen to go to the Bogaboos and ski tour on my telemark skis. Um, it's a great tool to, um, to ski and uh, also do snow safety. Um, I love it. and. Uh, I think there's a few of us at CMH that guys on tele skis. It's just there's not only Steve and I. There's other guys, so um, we hope to telemark ski with you soon. Great, thanks, Lily. Okay, Ali, here's our next one from the live chat. 
Okay, what are the steps guides go through when trip planning, especially when accessing AVI terrain or risk or assessing? Sorry. Okay, I'm going to hand this one over to Rob if you'd like to answer. Boy, uh, I could spend the next 20 minutes talking about this, but uh, very briefly, you know, our, our guides have multiple years and decades of experience uh, in the train and as guides, and they are in the areas all year long following the evolution of the snowpack and the conditions on a day-to-day basis. And uh, twice a day they meet to uh, assess the changes in the conditions, uh, how it applies to what we know has been happening so far this season, um, and then going through the list of runs and deciding which are the ones that we can safely ski and which ones we want to avoid, and then come back uh, at the end of the day to uh, go through their observations. We have a guide who is dedicated to snow safety with a separate helicopter going out doing separate snow observations that help in the overall knowledge. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, quite a process. Awesome. awesome. Thank you very much for that answer, Rob. And with that, we're going to take our next commercial break. Here it is. Right on, some more ski stoke. Cool, so we'll open up the third segment here with fun one. This one should be interesting. Oh, Brody, hey, how many of you can do a backflip and land it? That is a great question. Well, why don't we just do this with a show of hands from everyone in the sidebar. Put your hand up if you can land a backflip. There. <laughs> There you go, Brody. We're better with our feet on the ground, it looks like. All right. Let me see. I'll find the a next one here. Oh, here's a good one. All right. Oh, another one from Bailey. Should CMH bring back the one-piece guide suits? That is a fantastic question. Mike, what do you think? Hell yeah. Bring it on. Okay. Only, but they have to have studded belt buckles with like a, or a studded belt with a skull belt buckle or something. I think that was the look in the mid 90s. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to put on one more from the live chat. Here we go. Okay, from Andrew. What's the biggest change from when you began guiding to guiding now? Why don't I give that one to Steve? That's a, that's a good question, Andrew. Um, probably, you know, I think back to my career. So this is, was my 26th winter that I've been with CMH. I, I think probably the biggest change is, um, I, I think that we've kind of looked at the way we've, we operate, I think our safety measures that we have in place and how we've evolved. Uh, we've become a leader in the, in the mechanized skiing and in the backcountry skiing world, as far as working with companies on development of hardware like avalanche beacons um you know avalanche flotation devices like the backpacks so i think our place in the industry is is pretty prominent and it's something that i think we should be super proud of um I, we still ski a lot and that hasn't changed much um helicopters are similar uh, but overall i think that just where we stand in our industry is something that uh, has been really cool to watch and to see that evolution over time 
Awesome. Thanks so much, Steve. Okay. Now this next question we have, it's not a video message, but it was one that was uh, sent in by email from uh, one of our guests, Alan Agle. And I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Oh, no, that's not it. It's the next one up. Sorry. Here we go. Alan's question. All right. So what is CMH's long range thinking and planning related to climate change? Well, I'm going to give this to the big boss man, Rob. Go ahead, take it away. <laughs> uh, thanks, Ellen. Great to hear from you and a great Earth Day question. Um, so, you know, obviously uh, climate change is a concern for all of us at CMH uh, as for every citizen on planet Earth. And, um, you know, it's something that we take seriously as a company. We are doing our best. Are uh, trying to do our part uh, towards solutions. Uh, we do regular carbon footprinting exercises, uh, work with various consultants to look for how we can be more efficient with uh, energy use. Um, as some of you know, we have a micro hydro project in Galena and we're, uh, we're, we're in advanced uh, investigation stages to uh, do more of that in some of the other areas. And our, uh, our parent company, Altera, has stated a, a, a long-term goal to become a net, uh, carbon zero, uh, net zero carbon. Uh, and so, you know, we have the backing of our, our parent company as well. Um, climate change is a very complex issue. And uh, when I look back over the uh, 36 years of, of, of um, heli skiing that I've done, uh, I don't feel in any way that, uh, and I know this is not true everywhere in the world, but uh, you know the quality of the ski experience has not been adversely affected at this point. We've had a run of amazing winters uh, for many years here. So we uh, are gonna do, do the best to do our part to become a part of the solution uh, and uh, also enjoy some great heli skiing while we're at it. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Rob, for that. Now I'm going to do a quick rapid fire question for everybody before we take our next commercial break. This one's pretty uh, easy. What is your favorite flavor of cookie in the cookie jar? Let's start with Steve. Oh, I love it. Um, no question. I don't think I've had a bad chocolate chip cookie at CMH in my career. So chocolate chip all the way. Awesome. Rapid fire, Craig. Favorite flavor. Oatmeal raisin. I'll be the outlier. Okay, Mike. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Steve. Chocolate chip. All right, Rob. Chocolate chip. And last but not least, Lily. <laughs> Chocolate chip. Okay, awesome. Chocolate chip. It is. Well, we're gonna take another commercial break here, and when we come back, we'll do our skill testing question. Right on, bridges, waterfalls, zip lines, looks like fun. Okay, so viewers, let's get our ears ready here. Here is this week's skill testing question. It is, 
four out of five guides can't be wrong. What is our favorite flavor of cookie in the cookie jar to win this cerium jacket? Again, favorite flavor of cookie in the cookie jar. Get your answers into the live chat and we will convert your answers to paper and Allie will draw a name from the hat for those who answer correctly. Now I've got a uh, another one. Here comes our next question. Okay, best snack to bring in your pocket for skiing. Ooh, this one's really good. I'm gonna answer this to start. I like putting a couple of pieces of bacon in a bag and putting it in my pocket. <laughs> Lily, what about you? <laughs> oh, I carry a granola bar or fruit fruit bars. They are my favorite. Awesome. Mike, how about yourself? Uh, I like some sort of energy bar or maybe even a gel. I'm not a huge fan of the, you know, the big sugary treats, although, you know, some of the gels are a little sweet, but yeah, I'd, I'd go uh, energy bar or gel. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. And uh, what about you, Rob? Yeah, probably fruit or granola bar or one of those uh, leftover uh, chocolate chip cookies from lunch. <laughs> Okay, awesome. All right, here's our next question. How many of your guides are women? Lily, why don't you answer that one? Yes, there's about 20 of us now, and there's more coming in the program, so there'll be more in the future at CMH. But uh, yeah, that includes a full mountain guide, ski guide, assistant ski guide, and tail guide, 20 of us. Okay, awesome. So if you're looking at the uh, the viewers on the side of the screen, that's about one fifth of our guiding team as represented here. Okay, next question. I'm gonna scroll past all of these skill testing question answers. Let's see what we've got here. Well, I think people are still putting in their answers from the skill testing question. So I'm gonna grab one that was asked by some guests recently. And uh, it is right here. How many of your guides snowboard? That's our next question. How many of our guides snowboard? And why don't we ask Craig that one? Oh, that's a good question. I, I don't know the actual number. I mean, there's definitely quite a few that can snowboard. I would, out of 140 guides, I'd probably say 30, 40. It's not like I love snowboarding. It's not always the best tool to guide on you you really got to be on it um just because it's harder to move around but i think you'll find that a large portion of the guides snowboard and enjoy it awesome all right thanks for that craig well at this point we're going to take our last uh, video question this one comes from our guest bill bill take it away hey greetings to my friends at cmh it's bill fraser from california i have a question that is probably on the minds of many of CMH's longtime guests, and that is given that the staff put so much time into planning COVID protocol for the 2021 season that didn't happen. I'm wondering, given the path to vaccinations that's occurring in North America, how you will be adjusting those plans for the 21-22 season and what guests can expect in terms of the usual CMH experience versus other plans that you may be looking at, uh, although it's still quite early. Uh, thanks very much for answering the question. Hope you're all doing well. Okay, thank you, Bill. Well, that's a very current uh, question, and I think all roads lead to the top on this one. We're going to fire it over to Rob. <laughs> thanks, Bill. A <laughs> great question that we are spending a lot of time thinking about. Um, as with everything at CMH, our number one goal is uh, safety, and we want everyone to go home safe and healthy, uh, whatever the experience. Uh, as you've mentioned, we put countless hours, days, weeks, months into developing uh, comprehensive protocols to uh, deal with uh, the situation. Um, we will uh, follow whatever the public health orders are at the time, as mandated by uh, uh, the authorities in British Columbia. And, you know, so we have built scenarios on top of scenarios and uh, you know, I've given up trying to predict the future when it comes to COVID. So I think we're prepared for just about anything. And uh, as we get closer to the winter, we'll uh, uh, keep you updated uh, what to expect when you do come to CMH next winter. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Rob. 
Well, at this point, we're going to take our last commercial break. And when we come back, we will announce the winner of our skill testing question. Oh man, the gold range in the Southern Monashies there. That's quite the uh, quite the place. All right, well, it's the moment you've been waiting for, folks. So our skill testing question again was, what are four of our five panelists' favorite cookies in the cookie jar? And the correct answer is chocolate chip. Ali, who do we have as our winner? Okay, well, thanks to, to Bailey for assembling all of these digital names into paper. And the name I have just pulled is Beverly Hall. Congratulations. Our contact information is listed just below. So please get in touch with us and we will get your new Cerium jacket shipped off to you right away. Right on. That is awesome. Well, looking at the time, that's about all the time we have for today's show. So everyone's back on here to say goodbye. It's been an exciting and informative winter here on the Heli Huddles. We'll take a break this summer and we will be back this coming fall with more uh, great segments here of the Heli Huddles. Now, if you have any topics or interests that you would like us to discuss this fall, please grab uh, our email, which is below uh, the screen here on YouTube. It's also info at cmhheli.com and send us your requests of what you'd like to hear us talk about. Well, thanks for your time today. It's been awesome seeing you. So from all of us in the great white north here in our finest plaid, cheers, eh? And have another great summer. Thanks for joining. Thanks everyone. Yeah, everyone. Thanks everyone. Thank you.